The Great Lakes borders eight states, including diverse cities, including Cleveland, Detroit, and Chicago. But the environmental movement, which began more than 100 years ago, has been slow to address issues that affect minority communities. Great Lakes Today reporter Elizabeth Miller is exploring the issues of race and the environment in a three-part series airing this week on 90.3 WCPN. She joins us to tell us more about it. Welcome back, Liz. Thanks. So your story begins with a little bit of history about how this org environmental organizations haven't always welcomed people of color. Color. Why did you want to start your story with that? Yeah, so I went to a conference last year um, in Sandusky, and that was focused, and I, there was a panel there focused on race and class and the environmental movement. And I didn't really know how much of the history had to do with, with how things stand today, and I thought it was important to, to start there and talk to some people who who can explain that history and explain why it was focused on a predominantly white middle class consumer right when the environmental movement started. Um, but I do, I also wanted to start there and, and do this whole series because I think it's a, a problem that needs highlighting. Mm -hmm. And so in your second story, which airs tomorrow morning on WCPN, you talk about 2014, there was a turning point and a wake-up call for environmental issues. What, what are you talking about there? Yeah, so there were two main events that I focus on in the story. The first one was the Flint water crisis, which we, we all know a lot about. That was the, the city of Flint changing its water source from the Flint River to the Detroit, or from the Detroit River to the Flint River, mm -hmm. and that resulted in um, high levels of lead and, and discoloration in the water and in the smell water. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking at some video of Flint right there. Yeah, and so this is actually from earlier this year that I took of some um, contractors replacing those pipes. So that's an effort that's really continuing and will continue for several years. And But in 2014, environmental groups weren't always focused on drinking water infrastructure. And so Flint really changed changed that and changed the focus for that. The other, the other thing that happened in 2014 was a report, and that was focused on staff diversity in environmental organizations. Um, it was authored by Dr. Dorsita Taylor of, of the University of Michigan, and she, she found, she surveyed nearly 300 mainstream environmental organizations and found that in those organizations, no more than 16% of their staffers were people of mm -hmm. color. It, it's just really crazy. And so you also spent some time with groups here in Cleveland trying to change and, fo and focus on environmental issues here. Yeah, so first I spoke with Crystal Davis. She works for the Alliance for the Great Lakes here. And when she got the role last year, she wanted to focus on listening to communities and actually taking the time to find out if the issues that the Alliance was focusing on were the issues that people cared about here in Northeast Ohio. And so she did some little listening sessions in Cleveland and Lorraine and East Cleveland. Here's what she had to say about those. For folks that are in close proximity to water, they feel like the lake is theirs. They feel a sense of obligation to the lake. They do want to clean it. In Lorraine, they said, I feel like I should do beach cleanups because it's my lake. Um, they took ownership. And in Cleveland and with the, the youth, we heard, well, it's so far away that I don't use it and it's not, it's not mine. I don't like dirt, I don't like debris, and um, I, I don't feel that sense of connection to the lake. I also spoke with Cleveland's Outdoor Afro Community, which is a, a local uh, group for a national program that's focused on getting people of color, mainly African Americans, outside. And so with that group, I, I spoke a little bit about um, the importance of having, having a community around going outside and going hiking and going kayaking, things that might be scary, things that might be scary to do them alone, and, and now they have this community. And so that started last year, so it's still growing, but oh, good. promising. Good, good. And then just last week, there was a city club, city club discussion about diversifying the national parks. What did you learn there? Yeah, so that, that pa uh, panel discussion at City Club included Metro Park CEO, Brian Zimmerman, uh, someone with the YMCA, and Dudley Edmondson, who's an author and a nature photographer. And so there was a lot of talk there about the challenges that still need to be over overcome in terms of getting people of color, using parks, using the lake, using mm -hmm. things like that. But there was also a lot of conversation about doing things out in nature and, and being a part of nature while also being black or, or being a person of color. Dudley Edmondson had a sad but memorable story to tell from this. Here's what he had to say. When I was birding, uh, I've had those things. I had a sheriff dude following me, you know, and I got books on my passenger seat, I got my binoculars, and then he rolls up behind me and says, man, what you doing out here? And it's like, 
I'm just burdened. You know, I'm looking, looking for owls. And he thought I was casing white folks' houses. And I'm like, man, I'm looking for owls. I ain't got time for that. Hmm. <laughs> so w what's next for the environmental movement? Well, hopefully we've got a, a more zeroed in focus on issues that affect everyone, not just one group. And so there's a conference next month um, in Buffalo where Great Lakes Today is going to be and, we'll, and it'll also have some panels on things like lead, things like urban water issues that I really hope will show um, a dedication to changing the movement. Well, as Elizabeth Miller, thank you so much for those reports. Thanks.